So there's two guys that are out hunting, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, and they're spending all day, and they're not having much luck. They just aren't. And all of a sudden, as they're walking around the woods, they get lost. They have no idea where they're at. They can't tell where they've been, where they're, they have no idea. They are completely lost. And they finally look around, and the one guy says, well, you know, my dad always said, if you ever get lost, it's really easy. You just fire three shots into the air, and then wait. And so he fires three shots in the air. They sit around. They wait. Nothing happens. So the second guy goes, well, let me, let me see if, if I don't do a little bit better. So he fires three shots in the air. They sit around and wait. Nothing happens. Finally, the one guy looks at the other and goes, you know, I'm really starting to get a little bit nervous because it's getting awfully dark out here. And the other guy goes, well, I'm really concerned because we don't have any more arrows. Uh, I think they missed the point. So the thinking wasn't that far off, but the truth was, there we go. They had the wrong equipment to solve the problem, right? They had the wrong equipment to solve the problem. And the point of the story and what I wanted to spend a few minutes with you this morning talking about is how often we have the wrong equipment to solve the problem. So I just want you to think about this. You're sitting around and something pops up in your life, right? What does it averagely look like for us to do that? On average, we sit back and we go, okay, well, I need to figure this thing out, right? So the problem shows up, you're like, all right, I gotta figure this thing out, okay, cool. You might wanna sit back and look at it and go, all right, well, sometimes what caused it? Might not be a bad thought, like, why is this happening? The third thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start putting together some information. All right, got this, got that, well, some different ideas, solutions, and stuff like that. Then you're gonna come up with one. You're gonna come up with a solution. Sounds good, everything seems to be okay. Is this kind of the process most of us use when we solve a problem? Generally speaking, yes. And then we take some action, and then what do we do? We see if it works, right? Isn't that kind of the thing that we're doing? I would say that 98% of humanity uses that pattern of figuring out problems. But I want to focus in on one thing. The part where it says, I need to figure this out. I need to figure this out. The problem with that statement is that when you say that, you're doing it alone. You're doing it alone. In other words, you're sitting over here, you got this problem and all this stuff is going on and all of a sudden our ego grabs hold of it and then all of a sudden it's like, come on, let's figure it out. Why? Because our brain is wired that way. Our brain is the thing that figures all this stuff out. And we think that by doing that and going into this process of figuring out these problems, that that is what's going to solve our problem. And what I'm going to tell you right now, if you do it that way, you are missing out. You're missing out. Why? What's missing in that equation? Higher consciousness. God. God. Do you know what you have access to because who and what you are? Do you know what you have access to simply by just acknowledging that? But yet we forget. Don't we? Don't we forget? Am I the only one that forgets? No. We forget. We get so wrapped up. It's like we've got all this stuff that's going on in our lives. And again, I know there's some people in this room that are dealing with some stuff. I get it. And yet, when we sit down to solve those problems and we're trying to figure it out, it's like we forget to do probably one of the most important things that you could ever do, which is to reconnect, pull it in, and understand that you're not doing this alone. You don't have to. You don't have to unless, of course, you think you do have to. 
And then if you think you do have to, guess what? You're going to do it alone because that's the way it works. That's the way it works. So when we talk about figuring out a problem, when I sat back and looked at it, I thought to myself, okay, what's the difference between figuring out a problem when I don't work with God or my divinity versus what's it look like when I do? And some thoughts that came to my mind were, when I don't do it with God, anxiety. I also noticed that when I don't plug into my divinity, and I didn't put it up here, but the other thing is, it's difficult. Often, it becomes very, very hard when I'm trying to figure something out. Often, if I'm not careful, I go into fear. Anybody ever have that one? Yeah, you go into fear. You go into fear. What's going to happen? What's tomorrow going to look like? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to take care of that? What's going to happen? We start going into fear, right? Overwhelm? How many, how many of us do overwhelm? Yeah, exactly. You can go into overwhelm too because you think in the back of your mind that you've got to do all of this all alone and now all of a sudden we start going into overwhelm. And guess what? We do. We go into overwhelm. And then ultimately, in some cases, you ever have this? You ever have it to where it gets so intense, you just... You just shut down? Yeah. Yeah. You just shut down. When I think about when I'm working with God, the first thing that I would say is that it becomes easier. It's much lighter when I remember to connect with God. Ultimately, peace. Peace. Why? Because when I'm able to take a problem and I'm able to connect with my divinity and I'm able to say, hey God, here you go. I'm surrendering to whatever happens. To know that whatever is going to happen from that moment is in God's hands. And regardless of what I may think, regardless of what my ego may think, ultimately, it's for my own best good and for my own spiritual growth. Every single time, no matter what is going on, it's for my own good and for my best spiritual growth. It is. I'm not, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I'm not going into victim. I don't do victim. I know who and what I am. I know who and what everybody in this audience is. You're divine beings. Way bigger than we think we are. Way more powerful than we think we are. But when we fall into that victim mentality, then, just like I talked about the last time, then what happens? <laughs> When I surrender everything over to God, when there's a problem, and I put it in God's hands, and I reconnect with my divinity, ultimately what happens is I get peace. Peace is what happens when I do that. I get to relax. I don't freak out. I'm like, hey, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But here's what I do, though. I trust that the next moment, whatever it brings, I can handle it. No matter what, I'll be able to handle it. Why? Because of my divinity and because who I got standing next to me, which is the thing called God. That's not a bad thought to have when you're trying to figure stuff out, right? Yeah, not bad, not a bad thing at all. When I bring in God, I feel more expansive. I just do. I always say this, that when you're having a problem and you forget to connect with your divinity, what happens is I just, it just feels small to me. I just feel the world gets very, very small. I've got very few options. And those options, I genuinely don't like. I don't. And why is that? Because my ego has convinced me that I've, in the first place, that I've only got a few options, which is never the case, ever, because that's not the way your divinity works and God works. Because when there's a problem, there's usually multiple solutions you've got in ways that you could handle it. 
But when I wind up going without God, what happens is it completely shuts me down and I only think I've got a handful of things that I can do to figure it out when the truth is I've got a lot of different ways to figure it out and look at it and deal with it. The other thing is, is that when I'm with God, I feel hopeful. I just do. I feel hopeful. And sometimes that's the only thing that we need to carry us through until we get to the next phase of whatever it is that we're dealing with. It's just to, tr- just to feel a little bit of hope. So, last week I had a trip planned to Toronto, and the plan was that I was going to be going, I had a bunch of stuff to do in the afternoon, and I was going to be working until about 4 or 5 o'clock, and I knew it was going to be a little bit of a late drive. But I've done it a lot, so I wasn't overly concerned about it. But what happened is, throughout the course of the day, I kept getting delayed, I kept getting delayed, and I kept getting delayed. And the day was going on longer and longer and longer, and part of my day involved me being outside. Now, I don't know if you guys remember what last Wednesday was like, but it was about 95 degrees, and I wound up having to be outside for about three hours. So imagine being outside in that kind of heat for about three hours, and now I'm supposed to be getting in a car and taking a trip. I'm going to be in a car for six hours and driving. And the day is getting delayed. And now it's going from 4 or 5 o'clock, now it's going to 6 o'clock, now it's going to 7 o'clock, now it's going to 8 o'clock. i got to make this drive. I can't not make this drive. And so what do I do? Well, the first thing I do was completely forget all of this. (laughs) Right? I completely forget this. And I start freaking out. I'm freaking out because it's late. Sometimes I don't necessarily drive that great when I, at, at night, late at night. I'm freaking out because I'm exhausted. I'm freaking out because I know that I have to do this. And I'm just in like borderline panic. And then all of a sudden, it's like, Mike. <laughs> I hear this like little voice that's like, chill out. Chill out. And it's like, Pay attention to what you're telling yourself. What are you telling yourself? Well, I'm telling myself that I've been outside and it's really, really hot. I'm telling myself that I'm starting three or four hours later and I'm probably not going to get into Toronto until about two or three o'clock in the morning. And I'm telling myself that I I don't necessarily do very well driving late at night sometimes. And the most amazing thing was, as I sat there, and it said, this voice came inside of my mind that said something along the lines of, I'm here. I'm here and trust. I'm here and trust. And what happened within me was then all of a sudden I realized, well, what am I really telling myself? I'm telling myself that my past is going to indicate what I'm going to do in the future, which you guys know I don't do that. That's not the way it works. It also told me that by me saying, projecting, everything that was going to happen, it's like, look, dude, if you want that to happen, keep thinking that way. You know, there is another option. And the other option is you could stay present and you could trust in the moment that you're going to be given exactly what you need And that guess what? If you want to, I know this is kind of radical, right? But you could ask God just to sit right in that passenger seat with you as you're driving to make sure that you're okay. Stay in the moment, Mike. That was the message that I was given. Stay in the moment. And so I pulled out of my house in Grand Rapids about 8:30. I was exhausted, I was tired. Nothing had changed other than my mindset, which my mindset said, stay present. Stay present. As long as you stay present, we'll make this together. And to make a long story short, what I will tell you is that I made it. Didn't get in until about 2.30 in the morning. It was late, but I made it. Wide awake, 
never a problem, and everything was great. I share that story with you because I don't think I'm that unusual. I don't think there's times in our lives when stuff comes up where we freak out. But you know what the truth is? When you're connected to your divinity, if you remember, which is the point of all this, you don't need to freak out. You really don't. You can just be present and know that the next thing, whatever the next thing is in your life, that you're going to be okay, that God is with you, and that there's something that's happening for your own good. You're not a victim. You're not. Myrtle Fillmore knew that. She said in How to Let God Help You, as you study, you'll learn your mind receives from two sources. It receives from the universal mind of being, God, and it receives from your intellect. So Myrtle and Charles knew full well that if they only relied on their intellect, they were only getting half. I would argue it's way less than half of the potential to solve a problem. But they knew if they connected and remembered who and what they were, that it opened up and changed everything. There was another, how many know Imelda Shankland, Unity author and teacher? Phenomenal, she's not very heard of. She's another one of those amazingly powerful women in the Unity movement in the book called What You Are. She said, and I love this, that's why I named the talk after it, your equipment is the genius of God. Think about that. Just think about that for a minute. If you had a problem in your life and the first thing that you had go through your mind was, no problem. Why? Because my equipment, what I use to do this stuff work with, is the genius of God. I just want you to imagine this for a minute. Imagine that you're going outside, and let's say, how many, people, how many gardeners we got out there? Gardeners? Yeah, we got a handful of them. So I want you to imagine you're going out in your garden to work, right? And one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to go, oh, well, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need the trimmer, I'm going to need the mower, I'm going to need the leaf blower, I'm going to need da 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 And then you go and you grab all that equipment. That's generally what we do after you think about what you're going to do, right? What would happen if you didn't grab all that stuff? What would happen? Good luck. Yeah, not so much. It's not going to work. Or it's going to be very, very difficult. What I love about this statement is what Shanklin knew and what she reminded herself of and reminded us of is that your equipment, what you have inside of you, is the genius of God. I posted on Facebook yesterday because I thought it was funny. I took a picture of me standing up in front of the sign and I just said, mic drop. Boom. What else do you need to say? Seriously, what else do you need to say? The genius of God. That's what we have. That's what we have. But you know what else she said? It's under your command of your choice. Why did she say that? You have free will. You've got free will. To me, free will is the ultimate proof of unconditional love. It's the ultimate proof of unconditional love. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. You don't have to. God's not going to sit there and judge you if you don't use it. God's not going to sit there and not love you because you're not calling on this thing called your divinity to help you. There's no judgment. None. But in order to use it, we've got to choose it. If you don't choose it, you don't get to use it. Right? It's that simple. It's not terribly difficult to figure this out when you really think about it. The other thing that she said is that you're equipped with omniscience. That's just all-knowing. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just all-knowing. Or the omnipotence, all-powerful, 
of God. That's what I get when I remember to choose and decide that's what I'm going to be using and that's what I'm going to take advantage of. And as a divine being that's connected all the time, I get to take advantage of that and I get to use it if that's what I want. Don't have to. Sometimes we forget, right? Sometimes we forget. So, in terms of just a couple of things to remember, is if you're not careful, you may be using the wrong equipment. You might be shooting some arrows up in the air. You might be using just your ego to solve the problem. So just pay attention. Pay attention to what you're doing. When something shows up, don't freak out, don't panic. You can, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Just remind yourself that my equipment is the genius of God. Think about that for a minute. How does your life change when you walk around knowing that statement, that one statement? How do you approach life knowing, I got this? Can you feel it? I can. Just knowing it, standing in the presence of it, just being like, wow, I got God in me. That is amazingly powerful. In order to access it, I must choose it, though. I must choose it. It cannot or will not be forced on me. Again, it's something that we've got to ask for to reconnect. And if I don't choose it, then I'll lose it. I don't know if it's a matter of losing it, because my opinion is and my experience has always been that you don't ever lose it. It's always there. It's kind of, as my, one of my favorite sayings is, it's kind of like gravity. God's kind of always on, right? And so what I hope I leave you with this morning is this thought or this idea is that when you're out there playing with life and stuff happens, that you just pause for a moment with this idea or understanding, you know, the truth is, no matter what's going on, no matter what it looks like, no matter what my ego is trying to tell me, the truth is, I've got God. I've got God because of who and what I am. Not because of what I did or didn't do, not because of everything else that's going on in life, not because I'm a good person or a bad person, no, this is your birthright. It is there. And the only reason that we don't experience that is because we tell ourselves it's not. It's not. The blessings from God, from our Mother, Father, God, are more than we can ever comprehend. It is. We just can't believe it's that good, that it could possibly be that good. And the truth is, it can be. It can be. But for some reason, right, wrong, or indifferent, we think that somehow we're limited, that we should only be able to accept that much. I'll just take my little piece, God. Just give me my little world and let me stay in my little box and I'll just stand here and I'm good with this little thing. And God's sitting there going, come on, I've got so much more for you. I want you to understand something. God is always telling you that. I have got so much more for you. Can you, and I'm going to challenge you, can you honestly just give yourself permission, the ability to receive all the gifts and all the blessings that the universe and God or whatever you want to call it is willing to give you? I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to test you over the next couple of weeks. Receive. Be in the presence of receiving. Don't limit what this planet, don't limit what the universe has for you. Don't. Take the blinders off. Let them go. I'm receiving. You know what, God? I may not understand it. I may not always get it. But you know what? 
I'm going to take some courage and I'm going to sit back and I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. I'm not going to limit the blessings that you have for me. Try that as a prayer. I am not going to limit the blessings that you have for me. Watch how things change. Watch. Watch. So from now on when the problem shows up, just remember that your equipment is the genius of God because that is who and what every single one of you has access to. How fun is that? Play with it. Play with God. Make God your friend. Make God your friend. Hi, God. That's how I pray to God. Hey, buddy, what's going on? How's your day going? I play with God. I do. I really, really do. I think sometimes we've got this belief that it's got to be proper. It's got to be said this way and such a way and this and that. And it's like, no, not really. Just have a relationship with God, like a real relationship. Think about God as, for a minute, like another part of your life that's a relationship. Now, it has a little bit of a bigger flair, if you will. But have the opportunity just to enjoy this relationship because it's amazing. It's amazing. How's everybody doing? Okay? We good? Good. Blessings. 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 <laughs>